Subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Garrett and Matt are here again. And uh, I'm excited because, Matt, we just came off of an amazing journey. I've done this a handful of times. You, this was your first time. But we got a chance to go out and, one, participate in an amazing event put on by the Group Inc. in Fort Collins. They do their annual Winter Soldier event. Matt and I had the honor, is the honor, of being able to go out and speak at the event to this group of amazing real estate agents which was absolutely over the top. We had, so Matt and I had a blast doing that outside of our box of normal day-to-day stuff, which was <laughs> kind of a fun little switch up. But Matt, we got to do a board breaking. Yeah, that was cool. Oh my gosh. So uh, Matt, as we jump into this, good morning, sir. I'm excited to, because we really haven't downloaded too much since the board breaking. We haven't had a chance to really talk about like, how was that experience for you and what did you get out of it and what was the, the power for you personally? So I'm excited to kind of have this first off conversation, not only just with you, but with everybody who's listening. Yeah, me too, man. And, and happy new year to everybody who's listening. Garrett, I'll, I'll wait to say that until it's actually 2022 for us, but <laughs> happy new year to those of you who are tuned in and ready to kick butt in another year that's going to be incredible. But back to the board breaking, I think it's a good topic to kick the new year off with because the whole thing with the board breaking was about breaking through fear. And that's kind of how it was run. And and when you think about it, and everyone's saying, oh, but breaking a board, okay, yeah, that's like karate and all this stuff. It's like, but the exercise is leading up to it. I mean, this whole thing to break a board, which took half a second, was a couple hours, Garrett, of leading up to it, which I think it changes the whole experience of it, puts more meaning on it, which is what I really enjoyed about it. Obviously, this is my first time doing a ninja board breaking, which some people might be surprised to hear that considering I've been involved in ninja for many years, but these opportunities do not come up often. That's what I was going to say. I mean, this is as powerful as they are the organizing it to make it done right, to have the right environment, to have the right people that we can have that can run it. It's not just like, oh, let's do a board breaking and we'll throw one together. Like there's a lot that goes on in it. In my time, in my years of being around this, so we're going back 16 years, I've been really heavily active in Ninja. I've broken one board back in 2007. Second board here just recently broke. I've been a holder many, many, many times. I've been a holder probably, you know, I'm going to say maybe upwards of 10 times. But that means like over literally 16 years, like that has been my experience around board breaks and I've been around a lot of them. So uh, I think that's an interesting thing to kind of like say right up front, like this is not something we just do all the time. It's not something Ninja does all the time. It's something that we kind of, uh, it's turned into a very special event when it does happen. I love that you pointed out the setup. It would be pretty interesting. Oh, sorry, Gabe. Really, dude? Is this how we're going to do this today? <laughs> yes, because I just want to say it would be pretty interesting if we just woke up every morning and we're like, oh, stretch a little bit, break a board, and then go on with your day. You know, just, just saying. So it's funny, somebody at the group, and I forget who it was, it might have been Todd Fields, who's very, very involved in the actual board breaking. And, and he's like, it, talk about having his passion and heart into that event. I think it was him that brought up an idea to Larry years ago about what if they had a board vending machine at the actual office. So like when you're getting ready to go on a listing presentation, like you just you know put your dollar in, the board slides down, you warm up, smash through it. And you're like, here we go. Like we're off to kind of like get you in that energy. Because Matt, the energy, you said it's about it's a couple hours of setup to get you here. It's literally 30 seconds of you walking up and actually the act of breaking the board. And if you break that board and you look around, half the room, we had probably 200 to 300 people in that room, half the room is sobbing. Yeah, there was a lot of emotion going on. And I think that's what made this special for me in particular, because like Garrett, as coaches, we talk to people a lot about their fears and breaking through barriers and how do we do that. And honestly, I work on that for myself as often as I can, but rarely, you know, outside of, you know, some masterminds and things like working on that in a setting like that is not something that happens often for me. And it's fun to watch the emotions with that too, from other people, because 
I also get very excited about watching people break through barriers and achieve their goals and things like that. So seeing like, you can almost like point out the people in the room, like they're going to do something special this coming year because you could tell they had a wonderful breakthrough or transformation in that moment. And if you didn't have a wonderful breakthrough or transformation in the moment, that's okay. Also, it doesn't have to be that way for everybody, right? You know, you get your transformation when you need it, so to speak. So I wanted to put that color around it too, Garrett. Well, and I want to go through, like we talk about breaking through fear and using this board breaking as an example. And I think a lot of people listening might go like, okay, so you spend hours preparing yourself to break through a board and is the fear the breaking the board? And, and actually in that process leading up to it, what you do is you end up writing down your greatest fear on the board, like your greatest fear. And as you write down your greatest fear, you start to do visualizations to figure out where did this fear come from? How have I benefited from this fear? And what will my life look like without this fear in it? And so the board is a symbol. The real fear that you're breaking through is what's written on that board. And, and Matt, this is what I have found to be absolutely fascinating. In all my time of doing this, I have found people that didn't break the board. They went up there and they hit it and they whacked away and the board didn't break. And I've talked to them afterwards. All of a sudden, they'll start unloading about, I wasn't ready to let that fear go. I didn't want it to be gone. Like this fear provides me actually some really special things in my life. I had a, one lady one time and she said her fear was driving in the snow. And what would happen was, is the first snowflake would fall and what would happen was, is her husband would call, all of her kids would call, and they would check in on her to be like, hey, mom, it's snowing up here. We just want to make sure you're good. We want to make sure you can get to where you go. Part of her wanted to be totally fine and comfortable with driving in the snow and let that go. She then realized after super overanalyzing the fear and realizing where it came from, she realized that on the way home, looking at the fear on the board, she's like, I don't want those phone calls to stop. She says, me having that fear makes my entire family call and check in on me, which is this love that pours into her world when this fear is existing. But she's like, I don't want it to be gone. I want to hold on to this fear because it causes this thing that makes me feel so good. This is the, the amazing thing about overanalyzing these, what we really consider our fears. Again, most people don't think fears give you a value in your world. And sometimes they do. And that that's part of this process, Matt. That's a really interesting story. That makes so much sense. And what I really liked about exploring the fear too is, is Larry had us go through four things, right? What is the fear, right? What is it? <laughs> Write that down. What caused that fear to come about? Or why is it a fear for you now? But also, what is the benefit? And that goes to that, what you just said. One of the questions there is, what benefit has this fear given you? One of the hardest questions to ask every time... I've had to sit there and think of that to myself, like, what is the real true benefit that that fear has given to me? That is the part that makes me sit there and go, there's a lot of thought that has to go into figuring out. And what I love about that, which that question kind of surprised me, caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that to be a part of it, is that if you can acknowledge the things that you've gotten from your fear, you have taken a step in the direction of really accepting a high level of self-responsibility. And I think that's what gives you the opportunity to then potentially eliminate that fear. Because then the, the next question after that is, is, well, why be rid of this fear now? What's so important about this moment that now is the time to get rid of this? I mean, because maybe in the case of the lady you just mentioned, you don't want to. And that was really interesting for me to go through that and watch other people go through that because I think that third question is where most people spent a lot of time thinking and trying to determine, hey, does this make sense? Do I need to pick a different fear <laughs> to, to write about or to think about or put on this board? But if you can have that conversation with yourself about more than just your greatest fear in the moment for a board breaking, let's say, Garrett, thinking about this year ahead. What fears do we have about accomplishing the things on our business plan? What fears do we have about the marketplace? What fears do we have about the economy? What fears do we have about our family and our growth of our family or the growth of our business? How can we look at that and say, well, how has that fear served me to this point? And then determine, is this going to continue serving me? Is this the opportunity? Is this the time now to rid myself of that fear? which sometimes maybe isn't even eliminating that thought, but just transforming that fear into an asset. 
It's embracing what that fear is. It allows you to look at it from a different angle rather than just be scared of it, to understand that it, it is providing me a different level of you know, value or a way to look at the situation that's in front of me. That's what I have found with it. I know with my fear that I wrote on my board, which I'm not going to share with you because it's very private. It's okay. But that's the point. Yeah. And so I know for my fear, it's like, this is the first time I've written this one down. And it's something that I have really struggled with for a, a majority of my adult life. And it, it's interesting when you have to analyze it and figure out where that fear came from. And the fear comes from my parents, who I love dearly, but patterns that I watched them hold when I was a kid. And the patterns that I watched them hold of me having a fear through my life of like, trying to make sure that I, there's lots of elements from my parents that I've taken. And I'm like, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And there's things from your parents you look at, and you're like, okay, I don't ever want to do that. <laughs> I don't ever want to do that. And I have stopped myself from doing things in my life by holding on to a certain fear that I'm like so heavily trying to protect myself of not turning into somebody or not seeing that result happen. And there is a value in it in some way. It does give me a massive amount of benefit to hold on to this fear. At the same time, like this was the first time for me acknowledging this fear of going like, okay, now at the age that I am in my life and the experiences that I've had, like it was this overwhelming feeling of like letting go, like just being like, dude, let move on. You've got that part of your world figured out. This is not something that you're still trying to understand. And that feeling of letting go, Matt, for me was like, absolutely incredible. I didn't cry this time. I thought I was going to cry. Last time, 2007, I was a blubbering mess. I was crying before I got to my board holder. That's pretty awesome. That's the power of that room. I remember turning around and Pam Cass. Pam Cass is one of our coaches. She's involved with the group. Uh, she's been involved. With, she's been groupie for many years. I broke my board and I turned around and Pam comes running up to me, just just tears, just pouring down her face. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yep, <laughs> that's where we're at. <laughs> What's amazing about that energy too, and I'll share a little bit about my fear as well, but what's amazing about the energy when you get it all in the room, because there was a moment where Larry was having us go through this like fear exercise and he said, all right, well, can you feel the energy in the room? It's a little... It's a little low, isn't it? We need to bring that back up before we actually then move forward with this exercise. Yeah, that was that moment that everybody had to acknowledge their fear. Like that's what it started with. And the room's energy, you're right, Matt, was just like, oh. Yeah. And it goes down for two reasons, I think. One, because there's a lot of fears being brought out right there, which is going to create some low energy. And add on to that, maybe people were having trouble figuring out what their fear would be, which also contributed to some low energy. But that's why Larry was doing these exercises to help people change their energy almost actually, I would say precisely on demand. Because what's fascinating is, and this is great when you can do it in a big group, I think it makes it easier because you can share the energy of someone else. You can receive the energy of someone else to power you up. But that's also the downside of the group. But I think if you have somebody like Larry up at the front, it's always going to be pointed in the right direction at the end of the day. So being a part of a shared energy experience like that's awesome. This is what Tony Robbins does with the firewalking. In fact, Larry had um, brought him up during the discussion because the group is the first corporation to hire Tony Robbins and they've done firewalks and things and they did a board breaking with Tony. And the reason why these things are done in big groups is because when you can get all that energy together, you can boost each other up, which makes me think about, man, if you want to drive a company to an element of success, think about the energy that leadership puts in, that the individuals can put into that organization, which we had talked a little bit about brokerage in our prior episodes. What a solution you have, instead of looking at the structure financially. I mean, maybe you do need to look at that. But instead of looking at that stuff first, why don't you take a look at the energy of the company? Take a look at the energy that you're putting into your organization, the energy that you're receiving from your organization, and then ask yourself, how can we change that energy for the better? How can we bring this up? And a board breaking could definitely do that, or at least be a starting point for that. It's a collective energy of the tribe. What we watched in that room, and this is a reason that they, 100% the reason they did it, is that when you put somebody through an event like that as a collective group of people that are all working for the same organization, when I mentioned 
Pam, like I turned around, ran into her and we like embraced. And the whole thing was a big, 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 great deep hug and sharing that energy together. And that creates a bond with people that you can't get. I mean, think of your office in general, any agents out here right now, they're listening to this. And think of the last time that you cried and hugged another agent in your office. Or when's the last time that you thought, oh, I don't want to leave that piece of paper there because someone might do something with it, which is the opposite of that. That place of being vulnerable and being okay being vulnerable with these people because you have that sense that we're all in this kind of together. Yeah. Yeah. Togetherness is important. So Matt, I, w- I want to kind of go back here to this, you know, the idea of the board breaking and this like whole energy process you have to go through to get yourself in the state to break a board. Because I've been on both sides of it. I've been on the board holder side and also the board breaker side. And one of the most powerful things is to be a board holder. Anybody who's listening to this someday, if you get a chance to be on that side of the stage, you receive energy from every single person that comes up and breaks their board. You get like hug after hug after hug after hug of these people that are just on a different, they're in an altered state. We'll just say that. It's an incredible place to be in. But it's funny uh, because, and this is where Larry told me years ago, like, this is not a parlor trick. I've been on the board breaking holder side where we've had a gentleman who, let's just say, 250, very fit, like we'll call him a young buck, just powerful. During all the visualizations, Matt, they're like out in the hallway on their phone going like, oh yeah, we're doing a board breaking. I'm just going to go up there and pop through the board and be done with it. And I would be the one that would get to hold the board for them. And I would get my butt kicked. Black and blue fingers, bruised palms on my end from holding the board because they wind up and hit it with all their force. And I've like come off the ground and landed on the table behind me. And the board would not break. And the board is still, it's like, oh man, we got to do this again. Like I actually have to go up there and hold this damn thing again. And I'm getting hurt. It's a fascinating eye opener for the board holder because you really get a chance to see like, I can feel how much energy and how much power is being driven towards this board right now. And this darn thing ain't breaking. Where on the flip side, (laughs) you can have this smaller person come up, you know, let's just say a hundred some odd pounds. Let's just use like older in age and they will come up and go plink and go through it. And it's like, whoa, okay, that board crumbled in my hands. And here you have this person that was, did all the visualization, super centered, came up to me. The interesting thing, Matt, is that the smaller person knows in their heart that they can't break through it with their physical strength. They have to be focused. They have to participate in all the visualizations. They, they literally need to put themselves into that area if they're going to have any success of this at all. Where the other person doesn't do the energy, they're like brute strength. And it's really amazing to see what the results are at the end of that process when you work with those two different people. Well, that was the cool part about seeing Larry Kendall at 75 be the first person in the room to break a board. And then he brought up, I forget her name, but 110 pound woman, and she broke through the board to showcase, hey, listen, this this isn't about, I mean, granted, I think Larry and she were are very strong people, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but that it's not about the size of you or anything like that. It's about the energy you put into it. And for those of you who need a visualization, if you've never seen a board that's used for breaking, we're talking about like three quarter inch pine wood. We're not breaking through oak boards necessarily. That's stage two. That's stage two is go up to oak. <laughs> Mahogany. Some of these really strong hardwoods, you know, but here, hold on one second. I got my wood here. I mean, that's a solid board, right? I don't know if you could hear that. By the way, the sound guy who's going to be doing the editing for us is going to be looking at this and see this weird... I'm looking at the wavelengths and they're going to be like, what in the world happened there? And he's going to try to edit that out, not knowing what that is. (laughs) Even just knocking on it like that, I'm like, ooh, you know, I could feel that on my knuckles. And that was a board that, you know, the palm went through in, in one motion, which was awesome. So... We don't need to go into the technique necessarily. We'll save that for the opportunity when all of you all have a session where you can actually go through this. But I will say the symbolism, Garrett, for me of writing down a fear that I had, I'm not sure if it was my greatest fear. It's something that's always been top of mind for me. And what breaking through that for me did 
was not necessarily a release of, oh, great, that's behind me, but more of a challenge of, okay, this is now the identity that you're going to stand on. This wasn't important enough for you to write this down and to say this is something that you want to conquer and overcome. Now it's up to you to move forward and live that way. Do so through your actions and think back to this and use this as a reminder of, hey, you can live there if you want. But here's the reasons why you said you can't or you won't. So now go out and take care of it. Because the mindset is very important, necessary even to accomplishing big things. But then you have to follow up on that with the action of that new belief system. That's what it did for me traveling home. Um, And since we were there a few weeks ago, I've just been thinking about, okay, what's my next action that is going to help me continue to move past that? What's my next action that's going to help me build on top of that? And for the, the fear that I wrote down, it's something that can easily be redefined at different stages of life. So that can come back around very quickly in a different setting that I'll need to remember my system for overcoming that. Well, and my takeaway from the fear that I wrote down goes very much along the lines of since I've been from that event, since we've come from it, it has been front of mind for me with all of the the pieces that are aligned with that. Would I say I'm done with the fear? What I've done is going through that process of writing it on the board, going through the overanalyzing that fear. What are the benefits? What would my life look like without it? What I have found myself doing is when that opportunity comes up, my brain says, this is one of those moments that correlates with what you wrote on the board. And what are the different ways we can handle this thing now that, that's been put in front of you? And it's funny, I don't look at it like a fear. I look at it as an opportunity now is what I've noticed coming home. And we've only been home, what, Matt, for a couple of weeks. But that's what I've been noticing with myself, especially going through business planning and goal setting right now, because that's where mine's kind of like comes from and spurs from. I've been just kind of overanalyzing and saying, okay, like I have two paths I can take here. I can go this route, which keeps me safe, or I can take this route, which addresses the fear that's there. And really, if I look at like, what is the benefit of being away from the fear? It's making me want to take the path that goes to the fear. Because it's like, is that fear real? Is it really justified? I wrote it on the board. I overanalyzed it. I know what my life would look like if I let go of that and move towards it. What's the worst? One of the things we go through, Matt, and you remember is the, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen and what's the best thing that could happen by you going through this process? And we all yelled out, like, what's the best thing that could happen? Internally, there's things that I didn't yell out because it's personal for me. I've noticed is like coming out of this, like that's one of the best things that happened for me is I'm actually looking at what would have been the fear, accepting it as a different path and then saying, okay, if I take motion on this, this is what's beyond it. And is that fear really real now? That's been my biggest takeaway. And I hope that made sense, but that's been my biggest kind of release coming out of that journey. That's awesome. And that's a good point. I appreciate you bringing that up because I've forgotten about that. And a lot of times we look at a fear of going like, oh man, this is going to be so bad. But when you really ask the question, well, what's the best thing that can come out of facing your fear and moving past it? And what's the worst thing? And the worst thing is usually something that is so temporary. Uh, Like a lot of people are like, well, I can maybe break my wrist, which sounds pretty bad. And yeah, that would be not fun to do, particularly if it was your dominant hand, but is temporary. I'm not suggesting that people go break their wrist. Whereas the breakthrough things that can happen from facing and conquering a fear or even just embracing it, and maybe it's not something to conquer, could potentially lead to limitless opportunity, which is way beyond the downside of breaking a wrist. So now that might be different off of different fears depending on how you do that analysis. But I think that's also how we understand and test our own limits and how we can move past them, Garrett. So thank you for bringing those two questions up because that is what this is all about. If you want to conquer fear in 2022, any fears that you have, write them down and then ask yourself that question of, well, what is the benefit from breaking through this and what's the worst that could happen by facing this? We are not encouraging you to go cut chunks of wood in the backyard and do that. No, I say just write them down and ask the question. 
This is like a major disclaimer. Please do not go out and start breaking things. If you do, you do so at your own risk. At your own risk. That is on you. We are not liable for anything that you decide to do. Well, and Matt, that's kind of the reason I wanted to share that like this is not just a parlor trick of something to do. Like this is something that is so thankful for Larry learning this over the years. And it's funny, I went to Larry probably, I think it was about 10 years ago, maybe longer than that. And I said, I want to learn how to do this. Like I want to help be able to create more of these opportunities. And he gave me the full rundown, all the information on it. And I quickly decided 10 years ago that I was not, I personally was not at the level to be able to offer those, that I needed so much more training around this if I was going to bring that level to a room to control the energy of the room in that way. And I basically shelved it. Like I still have the notes around here somewhere. That's one of those things that's like, it's a really powerful thing. You need to have a skilled person to do this with you and to you know walk you through all the pieces of it. But uh, it's incredible. It's an absolute life-changing event. It really is. And it was a pleasure to be able to do it with you, Garrett, and with Larry and with everybody else that was there. And it was great to see a lot of people who listen to the podcast. All of you know who you are. had some wonderful conversations with people. And so I want to just say thank you to Brandon Wells and the group for inviting us out and having us participate. It was also great to see Matthew Ferrara speak and have a great conversation with him. As we mentioned, he's going to be making an appearance on this podcast, which is going to be fantastic. So thank you, Garrett, for being a part of that with me. And it was a pleasure to be there with you, man. So thank you for that. Absolutely amazing. And I find the people that I've been able to share that experience with and go through that with are lifelong friends. I think we're beyond that, man. We were already there. But I think that uh, those are life experiences um, when you get to have those little things you look back on your life and say what were powerful moments. So again, thanks for being there with me and being able to do that. Yeah, man. All good stuff. So I will say to everybody, if you have not yet joined our Facebook community... (laughs) You know who you are. I also want to say this. So Facebook community is at facebook.com slash groups slash the Ninja Selling Podcast. There's a lot of pending requests in there. I was messaging everybody initially when we started this group saying, hey, if you haven't answered the questions, please do. We're not doing that anymore. So if you have not been accepted to the group and you feel like you've requested a while ago, go and check to see if those questions that it prompts you with have been answered. And if not, just do a new request to join the group. If you're inviting people to join the group, please let them know that there will be some questions that they are prompted with. If you don't answer the questions, we're not going to let you in the group only because we want to make sure you really want to be in there and that you're not some type of bot. We've had a few people in there that have just like kind of slid through based on basic answers to these questions and we're trying to promote stuff. And that's something where we're definitely going to keep out of the group because we want to keep it pure. It's your community. And we appreciate everybody who's helping us kind of police that as well. People who are just in there trying to snag some business. It's obviously not the point of the group. It goes against our core philosophy. Yeah. To all of you out there, if you see self-promotion or people trying to promote their own products or whatnot, we do our best to manage that. Matt and I are pretty much the sole people that are kind of overseeing that and watching it. And we have a lot of people that will bring stuff like that up or people will slide into a comment way down on a post. It's mostly the comments that are the ones that are hard to spot, right? The posts are easy to find. So just bring it to our attention if there's something that, I mean, it is Matt and I that you're going to alert to that and um, we can take action. My biggest thing is I want to continue to have the authenticity of what this group was started as. It is really all about a community of sharing and growing. And as we're growing too, Matt, you mentioned this, there are some things that are starting to show up that are not really ninja as we have more and more people that are kind of coming into it. Those are things that we will do our best to make comments of like, kind of like following a ninja path, like that really fits with the ninja path to other stuff that's just, you know, great ideas, but not really ninja. And we're not going to remove that stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of people in there that are learning. And so we're going to use those as opportunities to share our thoughts on those things because We want you all to collaborate in here to the best of your abilities and opportunities. So, you know, please do that. The one request I will make is please do not just blindly share a post that you made on a page or something else into the group. If you do that, that will be removed, even if it's a nice post, but just blindly sharing another post into that group. Because I know when you post on 
a Facebook page in Facebook. It gives you all the options. Do you want to share this post? And it gives you a whole list of stuff. Uncheck the Ninja Selling Podcast when you do that, because I will remove those just because I, I, there's no context. So there's nothing to really be understood for us. So in my opinion, it doesn't bring a lot of value to the group. So that's going to be taken out. Well, there's that. Garrett, thank you so much. If you guys have any interest in um, learning more about Ninja Coaching, head over to ninjacoaching.com. If you're looking for an installation, head over to ninjaselling.com and click the calendar. All of the installations will be published there. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Here's to an amazing 2022. This is going to be an awesome year. No matter what happens, no matter what the challenges we face, Garrett, I'm confident that this year is going to be really incredible for all those who embrace that energy. Yeah, I'm excited for what this year is going to be. I'm excited to have Matthew Ferrar on because we're going to talk specifically about opportunities that are around us and kind of the pace of what things are going through. And, and that's going to open up some ideas of what 2022 is going to be for a lot of people. So excited for this year, excited to get this kicked off. And Matt, thank you and happy new year to everybody and have an amazing day. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.